Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode eight of the 316 ongoing series role playing game extravaganza, super fun fiesta here on my channel. I'm Eric, Eric Volgaris, on everything. Uh, and I'm doing super well. Uh, I saw Black Panther, and that was super fun. I've been playing role playing games nonstop. Uh, decided to build a sword and sorcery World of Dungeons Z game, and then realized I need to build a world building game for that game. And so I've been working <laughs> on that with uh, my friend uh, Luke, aka Games from the Wildwood. That's been super fun for me as well. Um, John, what's been fun for you? Well, I can't relate to that at all. I mean, usually game design is a very linear process where you just start <laughs> and write to the finish and it's done. It's very simple, not meandering at all. So I don't know why you're having that experience there. It seems weird, but yeah, I, I probably should just get good. Yeah, I think that's probably the main thing. Yeah, yeah. get good. Uh, I'm excited to see more of that. I saw a little bit, a uh, teaser bit of that, what you're working on. It looks pretty cool. So uh, anything World of Dungeons based, you know, I'm always interested to see what people do with that. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen Black Panther yet, which I really want to. Um, obviously, it looks awesome. But I did finally see Thor Ragnarok um, since I only watch things on streaming now, apparently. Uh, and okay. it was super fun. Um, I'm probably going to watch it again pretty soon. I think it's, uh, you know, I, I, I was talking to Allison about this the other day that I think there's, um, uh, there's, there are like gamer movies that we always think about as game, like aliens or whatever, um, that, that fit the, or ghostbusters that fit the sort of tropiness. But, um, and I, I don't know if Ragnarok is exactly that it's definitely close. Um, but more like in a meta way, I think there's certain movies that are really good just to have seen for touchstones going forward. And I, you can kind of tell like, it'll be really nice to have that in the brain. So you can, instead of trying to somehow encapsulate like Jack Kirby, you know, which maybe is not the most relevant touchstone to people of younger ages, uh, you can be like, you know, have you seen Thor Ragnarok? <laughs> and like, yeah, like it looks like that. Um, so I've, as I was watching it, I was like, oh, good. I'm glad someone put this on film. We need we need this in our lexicon of pop culture references to, to use as gamers as a shorthand. Um, yeah. And and also that like um, high level, like epic, epic D&D or epic Dungeon World or whatever. It, it strikes that really good note of these these characters are really powerful, but they're also like very um, vulnerable <laughs> and, and fallible. And that's a nice and combo. Human. And human. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. including Hulk, who kind of... Hulk, Hulk and Rock guy kind of <laughs> stole the movie from me. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Meek's not dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Starting a revolution, but I ran out of pamphlets. I feel like Ta Taika Waititi is just, just hilarious anyway. Uh, it's awesome that he's also a great director, but um i feel like just this doing that character alone would be enough <laughs> uh, yeah that was great strash what about you what have you been up to uh so i have also seen black panther and uh my rewatch of thor ragnarok because i saw it in the theater is actually scheduled for this weekend because i've been largely busy uh but i do strash things you know i i do some game design which uh we have a formal list of the last set of changes that are required before Band of Blaze is released, which means that even though it's probably still going to be a couple of weeks, it's in the pipe five by five, as they would say in Aliens. Man. Uh, um, and also, the um, I actually watched Mute last night, which was interesting. It's uh, from the director of Moon. Uh, it's oh, I put that on my list. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on Netflix. Um, it's The name uh, one more time? It's mute. called Mute, M-U-T-E. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, it's about a mute bartender in Neo Berlin. It's, uh, I won't call it cyberpunk because that's wrong, uh, but I will call it maybe cyber noir. It's a very dark movie, uh, very hard-boiled detective. Uh, it's not something that you want to watch for a good time, but if you like, like hard-boiled movies, this meshes up the two genres pretty well. Um, uh, so yeah, cool. it's, it's not... It's not the, the most pleasant fun times in the same way that Thor Ragnarok is, which is probably <laughs> why I want a chaser of something like fun and lighthearted to go with it. But uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. That was my, uh, my movie for last night. Uh, yeah. So what about you, Morgan? What you been up to? Uh, not much. Uh, I just um, 
finished up black bag detective so that's done with so i can finally i got my haircut finally which is nice i'm not rocking the <laughs> and some more white collars for me it was a good look i mean yeah but i understand you do want, want to change it up i do i also i saw black panther and it was great um so yeah uh been sick i got uh went to a con in los angeles and uh there was a stomach bug that went around and hit about half the people that i was hanging out with so hey yep Damn. basically just vomiting and terribleness and then sleeping for about a day and then you're fine but it sucked totally thrown off i'm like wait a sec that was just this last weekend i'm to- totally confused what's going on it's like my sense of time is all gone mm-hmm. did you play the did you play warhammer I did play Warhammer. Yeah, we played Warhammer. It was it was awesome. It was uh, unfortunately I, I was missing my my character. However, we ended up in this uh, little tiny village where uh, there had been a plague in a, in the big city, and the local Rough. priest he was kind of touched by chaos, and he was a Sigmarite, but he was touched by chaos, and he's like, "It's the end times." And the GM took inspiration from the you know Black Plague when everyone was dead. <laughs> it must be the end times now. Let's start playing the, praying to chaos because it's yeah. the only thing that will keep us safe because it's the end times. Nice. And we're like, it's not the end times, you asshole. We stopped the plague. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, Warhammer First Edition. It's so much fun. Great game. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. And how about you, Eric? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been having a lot of fun on on the internet streams, doing a lot of fun stuff. Um, my 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 D and D game Myth Dawn has been uh, incredible. Um, that's like my high fantasy dungeon world esque D and D that I've been playing with a bunch of people. We made up we did a world building thing with it and been going from there. And uh, yeah, now they're they're finally going to a wizard seclusium that's uh, on a comet uh, that they've been chasing down. <laughs> Because uh, it's the Comet of Prophecies, and obviously the the, the a high wizard lives in there. Because I realized uh, that every single star in the sky is a wizard seclusium. Oh, Clearly, shit. yeah, <laughs> every star is a wizard. That's hilarious. And, yeah, nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I realized that, that this one is a like I don't know I don't well, I mean it's a wizard seclusium. I say it's a wizard seclusium, but I mean like what's the difference between a wizard or you know a star and a comet? And uh, they'll get into that in a little bit. And they've met a three-eyed goat god. I've been doing a lot of Tower of the Elephant style, just like bringing a lot of like weird things. Cause we're we're not on the, we're not in in Kansas anymore, and just doing some some fun stuff with them. So I get to go real nuts and go crazy with D and D. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, That's uh, Torch, awesome. Torchbearer comes back this week too. Um, so I'm just excited to get into just all this this whole string of games again that I'm in. So I'm I'm very very excited. And speaking of being excited about things, I'm super excited again to play some more military games. Uh, it's been yeah. a hot minute since we were able to do Operation Diving Tiger. Um, That's right. But, uh, I wanna. I, I have to say real quick. I have a little bit of nerd cred. I always have to say this because I'm so I'm so like uh, uh, thrilled about it. Back when Vincent was doing, he was commissioning the cover for uh, the Seclusium Wizard Seclusium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, phones of the Three Vision thing. Yeah. Supplement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Love that book. And I was like, it should have flying eels. Everyone loves flying eels. Flying eels are cool. And I was just like kind of kidding around on on his blog. And that's the, he commissioned the art and the cover has flying eels attacking the people. I couldn't believe it. Uh, It just, it cracks me up every time I see it. I'm like, well, I mean, it does work. I was kind of kidding, but (laughs) I totally, it's good. (laughs) Design requirements. Giant flying eels at the very top. (laughs) (laughs) It's so rare that you just kind of make an offhanded comment into the world and then it comes into existence. Yeah, it is. Especially in the game design space. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Yeah, 316. We are back. We are ready for more hot trooper action. Um, but let's, uh, let's do a recap from last time. What do you say? And then, uh, then we'll do what our outstanding between mission biz after that. Yeah. Eric, you want to start us off? What, what happened last time? Um, sure. So, uh, last session was operation diving tiger, um, involved a, a series of, uh, complex technical maneuvers into a, um, like the heavy air near the core side of a gas giant and uh, looking to hunt and eliminate the breeding nests of these strange electrical blanket manta ray things um, that seem to nest on these sort of uh, buoyed rock web weird spongy material. Um, And we were tasked for with with eliminating them. 
um, did not did not start very well um, because uh, our, our suits and everything couldn't really handle it. Uh, I know I got uh, ejected from from the ship early on and uh, just, <laughs> was just fighting ever since. Um, yeah, that's that's where that's where I that's as far as I remember. Uh, Morgan. <laughs> Uh, well, I remember the pressure suits working wonderfully. <laughs> That's the problem with not being able to smoke any cancer suits. Uh, they worked great. Nobody died. Nobody got crushed by them. We only lost like one or two people due to, you know, severe atmospheric distress, but that's to be expected. <laughs> with what I remember... Uh, no, no, no. no. This is, this is, we're, we're totally having like a, a moment here. What I remember is accomplishing the mission. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh yeah we, we actually found like that we were attacked by these like tiny i guess larvae manta electricity cloak eating things um like sort of in swarms they were gushing at us out of the walls um but we also found three large orbs uh some of which tried to escape and we managed to capture them and like cocoon them and and with um stuff that was numbing and put them to sleep essentially so we dragged them up and sort of ascended out of the, the planet's crust while the ship nuked them till they glowed, then shot them in the dark. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, the, I think um, the sleeping bag was the name of the technology that that chat came up with. Uh, might've been Adam in chat, I can't remember who it was, but um, you deployed the sleeping bag and captured some pristine specimens uh, for Dr. Hall's uh, totally ethical uh, how to kill aliens better research program. Um, and, uh, from my side, what I, one thing I remember as the GM was anytime in 316, 316 GMs out there, take note when you introduce a planet or a potential mission that can do kills to the troopers outside of combat, uh, like this one could in two or three different ways. Um, it's, always super super risky and dangerous and horrible which is totally fine like it's 316 like go go for it um but i was like man we've got some good characters here and when introducing one potential way to take damage outside of combat is kind of bad and there were multiple vectors there and i was like well you know it'll be fun like well they'll all get killed and we'll see what the game is like when you kind of have to reorient yourselves and build that momentum back up again and go through that thing of like, well, we had some cool characters, but we have to let them go. And I was, I was so ready for that talk. <laughs> and then, uh, you guys just, you made some good decisions and then your dice were super hot and mine were super cold and that's war, man. It just goes, sometimes it goes that way. Sometimes it goes their way. Sometimes it goes my way. So, um, I, I'm personally glad that these characters survived because I really like them, but, uh, I was kind of kissing them goodbye before the session last, last week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah so it ended on um on lieutenant young's uh orbital bombardment of the planet 470 Wh kills yeah and the f the very last moment was was pasternak um finally getting to flip his visor up and light his cigarette off of his uh hot <laughs> his armor was so hot from the radiation exposure from the drop that it lit the cancer stick for him and that was our final moment. And so we didn't do um, advancement and stuff, which we can do now. Uh, we'll do the, we'll do the sort of mechanical bit and then there's maybe some in fiction stuff we have to, to deal with as well. So first is gaining levels. Uh, the P PC who killed the most creatures in the mission gains a level, which Yo. would be Lieutenant Young with a total of 497 kills on that mission. Good job. So very well done. You were actually doing pretty good on kills before the the drop, the bombardment. Um, but that obviously took it for you. So you automatically gain a level and improve your FA or NFA. Uh, it's been serving me well. Uh, so I think I'm actually going to go to... Mm, this is a tough call. because It, I is, really a, it is a tough call. I really need to raise my FA. It's been problematic, but I yeah. want to cap out my NFA just so that I'm done. I think I'm going to go to FA of four. Okay. So for people at home who aren't watching the screen, that puts you at FA four, NFA eight, yep. uh, which means you are level 12 in the parlance yep. of 316. So that means you, in your lifetime, will have had a total of two strengths and two weaknesses. So if you're missing 
one of those at this point you, that you may have just gained a weakness, I think. I did. Uh, so yeah, so you have unlocked a weakness. I have used both my strengths, but I have two weaknesses open. Okay. Uh, and I think, let, let's do a quick count. So Morgan, you have a strength left on Pasternak, is that right? I have a strength left and two weaknesses. Yeah. And two weaknesses. And Eric, you are out of strengths. Yes, I am out of strengths. So we have one strength left in the team and like four or six weaknesses or something yeah, like <laughs> hanging <that>. around. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Uh, all right. Then we do automatic improvement. So at the end of every mission, any surviving PCs gain one step of improvement to one weapon at one range for free. And don't we also roll who was the second person to we roll off to? Yeah, uh, there's there's a um, a roll off for second person to gain a level. Right. I did that. I did that out of order. Sorry. Um, we can go ahead and do that roll off now. So er right. Eric and Morgan, you guys roll. See who gets uh, a level. Three. Wow. A tie. Uh, I guess we roll again. How do we get a tie? One. Okay, Strash, did I just roll or? Uh, no, uh, Eric, oh, okay. Eric rolled twice. You rolled once before Eric. Okay. You should roll one more time. I see. I was looking at. There you go. You you seven. You get there it is. You get a corporal. All right. So you gain a level as well, Morgan. You All right. Go I'm, I'm going to raise my FA. FA, FA to eight, eight, seven. Pasternak's a monster. I know. Level 15, you just gained a strength, according to my calculations. Sweet. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you should have had a total of four strengths and three weaknesses up to this point. You maybe have one strength available now. Uh, cool, cool, and nice. Yeah, automatic. level 15, that's, that's legit. Um... <laughs> Hey, yeah, automatic improvement to your weapons. Choose a weapon and improve by one step at one range. Uh, I did not make our new overlay. I totally forgot. I'm going to make a new cards for us so we have our weapons and stuff on the cards, but just completely forgot to do that. Next time. Next time. Next time. Next time. I'm, I'm enhancing Elric. I'm enhancing Elric so it's uh, better at close range. And then um, Elric is a technically completely maxed out. It's in its best. It's it's living its best self right now. Wow! All right. I'm gonna up my E cannon to be D100 so I can be within spitting distance of. Uh, mm. <laughs> nice. That's smart. Or private Goodman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Strash, does Young have any weapons to, to upgrade? Are you? Yeah, I got a rocket launcher last time. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so I'm going a, I'm to a start that run. Nice. Cool. Increase the FA and improve the rocket launcher. I, I, I see. That's such I a see. good sentence. <laughs> I got a rocket launcher. I got a rocket launcher. A rocket pod, please. Oh. It's, a, it's branding. <laughs> yeah, te it's a technical term. Uh, then we have... Development roles. Everyone gets one development role. You can use it to increase rank if you used a strength, gain a new piece of war gear, or a weapon or a vehicle, uh, or increase a different weapon by one step. And you get to do one of those things if you succeed at an NFA test. Is anyone going for promotion? Let's start there. What up? <laughs> I yes. need a strength, so no. I know. I, I was thinking about that. I was like, I think Pasternak's going for promotion too. And then I was like, I can't recall the strength use for that. So, but now you have one to spend. So, uh, all right, let's, let's do it young. I can't see. Uh, it didn't oh, roll. It didn't work. Uh, oh. oh, success. Yes. Nice. I promote. So, um, you go to Captain. Captain Young. And I was talking to Paul Riddle about this. I should have said this before you rolled. It would have been more dramatic. Um, he, he recalled uh, secondhand from Gregor because he, he played with Gregor more than I did. Um, the, uh, instead of doing like, multiple roles like when you use a um orbital bombardment you have you can might get demoted and that's an nfa test and there's a couple other things that go into that 
but instead of rolling multiple times and like getting promoted and then demoted and whatever, da, 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 it's just make a roll and everything, all the rank stuff is on that roll. So, um, again, would have been more dramatic if I'd said that beforehand, but, uh, <laughs> we're not going to make you do a bunch of tests to maybe like go up and down and stuff. It's kind of, kind of dumb. So that's sort of a house rule, but whatever. Um, mm -hmm. cool. So that is your captaincy. And also in, encapsulated in that is the fact that the automated system that judges, um, authorized usage of, of bombardments doesn't, doesn't ding you for, um, uh, waste of resources. Uh, we don't have any losing rank situations. Um, if you use a weakness, you can go up for a demotion potentially, but no one has that happening. Um, I'm going to try to uh, requisition better grenades. Um, okay. I want my grenades to be more deadly. I fail. They Computer says me. no. There may still be a note about me not wanting you to have grenades. I think that's totally what it is. <laughs> yep. Well, I was able to get grenades, so I don't know what's wrong. With you guys. It flashes. It has like a has like a disciplinary action pending thing next to the request. Exactly. Damn it. <laughs> it also it also directs you to the uh, training facility aboard your ship, which you don't have on the Saratoga, um, to uh, like requalify on your <laughs> your appropriate uh friend friend versus foe uh, determination for grenade usage <laughs> uh morgan Ed, and you did, did you make your roll for your second yeah i did i, okay. I rolled right before strash and i got um i upped my grenades so that they are now a d6 at medium nice ah we were um, doing the same thing yeah yeah <sighs> i am uh slowly getting good with that grenade launcher Oh, folks, we have an APC. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Uh, yeah, are, are you reading your, your new captain's toys? I am, I am, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, that's fine. Let's, Does let's Saratoga go. have an APC? Um, that's a good question. There's, there's something, we're, we're going to do something in the fiction that might address that, but... Um, okay. Let's, let's look at your rank, Strash, now that you've got it. What are, what are your new orders? Uh, ensure that order seven... Uh, which I have now inherited, is ensure that no creatures on a planet survive. And order eight, deliver mission briefings and plan assaults. Yeah. So I, I, this, uh, this reminds me very much of, of certain other games where, uh, you know, they have like requirements for like morality scales or something and I'm playing like way off the end. So apparently I've been acting as a captain this whole time. Uh, well, yeah, a little bit. We've, we had some issues in the fiction where available captains to do mission briefings were not around, but however, uh, the, I, I take the planning assaults thing a little more seriously. So, um, not only is it giving the briefing, but it's also like determining, um, what the platoons are going to be doing, which again, you've kind of already done a little bit. You've been acting captain, so to speak, of the right. platoon so far, but you are officially the captain now. Was there um, even another major captain on the Saratoga? Yes, uh, but she was a scientist, if you recall, and she didn't really want to be here. So part of the reason why we went to go fetch the eggs is to give her a plausible way to advance by getting the thing that she wants so that I can step into her shoes and then we can actually have a proper command structure. Yeah, that was her goal, yes. Uh, the order seven is slightly different from order five that the lieutenant has. Lieutenant has ensure that no creatures in an encounter survive, and the captain gets the gets the planet. Uh, so it's a little more bigger responsibility to actually clear planets. Which last time uh, there was some debate about uh, not using the orbital, orbital bombardment because it wasn't your problem; you were a lieutenant. Um, but now, now it is your problem. Yeah. So you get uh, a new. A piece of gear also you get a power blade um which uh, i think actually, you already have yeah. um but uh the captain essentially gets one um so uh there is a second one i i, I think it just like appears in your armor rack uh, because of your promotion so there's a, a second one floating around if you want to hand it off to someone you can or not or you can keep it as a backup I think Goodman is totally into his power claw. Uh, yeah. I think I, I think I'll keep it. Uh, so like I think I, I think this one shows up with like 
little gold skulls and other bigly military 316-ish insignia on it. So, like, mm. I hang it up above my bunk and I wear it with my dress threads. Nice. Uh, so I have, like, the gore one that I take with me into combat <laughs> and I always get serviced and everything. And then I have, like, the nice one that I wear around the ship. Nice. Your dress dress power blade. <laughs> like you do. Yeah, of course. Okay, I think that's all for bookkeeping stuff. Yeah. Okay, so um, fortunately, uh, Corporal Pasternak has disabled the uh, interminable and annoying anthem yeah. that plays every time the awards are given <laughs> out of the vending machines in your bunks. Uh, so the process is much less painful. Um, but uh, the platoon's there and there's uh, there's some like fruit being born here of your work with the with the morale of the platoons. Um, as as the final promotion is coming up and your the captain's badge is being added to your armor and the uh, sword is coming down in the thing. There's a like a bang on the the door of the of the uh, of your racks, and it swings open, and it's Lucille and Lieutenant Tyrrell and some of the other people from the other platoon, and they they have uh, beer and uh, party stuff, <laughs> and they kind of pile in and and congratulate you. Uh, you. You've actually made quite an impression with all your various morale attempts throughout the game here, and you've become somewhat popular young. I don't know like what, what her demeanor is like as this starts to turn, turn into a party. Um, they're getting a little chummy with you. Uh, it's not quite the officer and enlisted divide that might be totally according to protocol. So what's her, what's her reaction as they sort of barge in and, and want to like slap you on the back and, and cheer and stuff with you. I think that this is, uh, she understands that this is more for them than it is for her. Um, so I think, I, I, I think she doesn't necessarily tell them to stop, but it's obvious that like, if a standard party is people like spraying beer everywhere and like hooting and playing really loud tunes and like dancing on tables, that's not young. She's, uh, uh, you know, she'll watch somebody <laughs> people fall and like smile, make sure it doesn't get too, too out of hand. Uh, and she'll definitely let them be here and like be around her and talk with them and everything. It's not that she's not appreciating it, but she's definitely like a little more chill. She's definitely not the, the, uh, she's not one of the guys as it were. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. is, is your sense of fun, like color coordinating and collating documents? I don't think so. Um, I just think that she's, I mean, we look at some of her strengths and she's had some, bad experiences in groups and she's starting to realize that the 316 is kind of held together by like toothpicks and chewing gum and there are some people who react to that by thinking oh well you know if everything sucks life's just a party let's let's yolo you know and that's not really her uh her her take on things right so she wants to encourage everyone to have a good time she wants to foster that sense of camaraderie but she doesn't um what they're getting out of this party is not what she's getting out of this party she definitely yeah. doesn't color coordinate her socks for, for fun. No. <laughs> but then again, you're not 100% they're sure. They're all what green, green, but they're slightly different shades of all draft green. <laughs> uh, um, of, fact, of everyone on the squad, you've been with her the longest, uh, Goodman. And yeah. for the life of you, you can't remember ever seeing Young having fun. Yeah. Uh, so. I, I pro- yeah. Um, I probably do a little like, to- I probably bring that up, right? Um, like I do like a big toast to you, right? And I like stand on top of the table and I like clink my 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 glass of of my my Budweiser slash Singzhou style Weyland Yutani generic <laughs> beer that that's the only thing they have available. Um, and I go, uh, you know, and I say uh, to Captain Young, the the least fun person we've ever met, you know, and and just everyone <laughs>, laughs and say like, no, we we love you. You can lead us through hell and back anytime. Um, but uh, after that's kind of done, I know for for starters, I would love to hear what the rumor mill has to say about who's going to replace them as lieutenant, because that's really relevant to me. <laughs> that's relevant to you. Uh, okay. Um, 
I think this, I mean, the party is the right place to do it, right? There's, yeah. there's it, it, initially it's just the two platoons. It's, it's Tyrrell. Um, uh, and, um, oh, I forgot to mention this. Um, I, I was watching the video back today and, and it kind of like slid past and I didn't really bring it up at the end. Um, you guys lost, uh, Trooper Ramos during the drop. They, they flew off into the maelstrom and nobody tried to rescue them. So they they were gone. Um, and then thank you, uh, for <laughs> updating the list. Um, and then Lieutenant Tyrrell's team, like, I, I made NFA tests for them to like meet up with you guys and they kept bungling their roles and being separated and stuff. And they took losses during that. And I just kind of completely forgot to say that. Uh, so we also have lost trooper Stokes and corporal Ross. They also were lost on the mission. So yeah, cool. KIA. That's, that's the right thing. Um, so I think there's, um, there's an initial like party phase uh, and Morgan, you let me know if Pastor Next do anything. There's two phases and you guys can do stuff in the phases or and then a third phase that we'll get to with the, the Captain Hall. Um, first phase is whoop it up party phase and everyone's cracking beers. The beers are like, uh, they're that like generic repo man style. Um, but instead of just saying beer in Helvetica on the side, they say fun exclamation mark. Uh, <laughs> So that's, that's what Pete, that's the colloquial thing in the, in the fleet is like, want to have some fun? And then everyone's like, ha, ah. uh, you, you get your beer rations. The, they, they know how to keep order, uh, with the ranks here, let them blow off steam. So there's this initial fun phase of the party where everyone's socializing and having a good time. Um, and then there's a second phase where people get a little maudlin and there's a kind of tribute to the fallen, uh, with, for Ramos, um, Stokes and Ross. <clears throat> so during the fun part, uh, Cortez approaches you, Eric, mm -hmm. and she like shoulder checks you between the shoulder blades from behind. And, and then, and then when you turn around, she like kind of shoves you back against your bunk. Um, and she's like, man, that was some shit, right? And, and, you know, obviously she's referring to when you guys were alone, like trapped against the swarm while she was covering you with the machine gun. Um, she's like, I saved your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. She's like, all right. And uh, yeah, I, I, Goodman's got to be like, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, I chalk it up to the list of people I owe my life to now. Uh, incredible. Yeah. In fact, this is, this is perfect, John, because um, I actually wanted, all right, I'm, I really want to like, in kind of not grill her, but um, get a feeling of like how she thought about this mission being kind of like, you know, not really necessary. It's like, yeah. And so I'm trying to think, I'm so I'm trying to say like, yeah, I mean, that was a crazy mission to begin with, right? It's getting out there. She's like, I, I, you just point me at the aliens. That's all I need to know. I don't think about stuff like that. And she, yeah. she reaches behind you and like to your, your second uh, fun ration. Uh, and she's like, and yeah, you do owe me. And she psh, pops it, like takes it away. Yeah, totally. I, I put my hands up I'm like, yeah, that's fine. It's fair. What's fair is fair. We even. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, she goes, not by a long shot. And then Classical. over her <laughs> Over her shoulder, you see Sergeant Stone. Uh, he's he's giving you the stink eye. Um, the the camaraderie is getting tight between you guys. Like Cortez mm -hmm. seems to think you're cool. You guys keep having these little moments. You bonded together on the mission. Cortez was like Stone's, like one of his best killers before you guys showed up and like took over the platoons. Um, and he really doesn't like you, Goodman. So. As as he sees this friendship like really cementing, he's he's like, you, you you can see the wheels turning. You know, you've you've been in the service for a while. You you see it in his face. Sergeant Stone makes a decision right here during the party to like bust this situation up and deal with this. This is uh, yeah. this is not good. You're gonna you're gonna corrupt his his best his best trooper with your you know gold bricking and your F friendly fire and like 
fuck that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not going to let that happen. So does he does he come over or do no, I just see this? You just see it happen. Uh, if you want to do something about it, you could try during the party, but it's, you know, obviously that's uh, that's a little risky. Yeah, no, uh, I am, though. I'm going to I want to play. <laughs> I'm going to play with danger here, John. Uh, okay. So after after I uh, I, I, I um, laugh and like punch uh, Cortez in the shoulder, take it easy. I, I go over to Sergeant Stone, hold my bottle of fun and I say, uh, hey, what's the problem, Sergeant? You look you're having, a, you know, a worse time than than even Lieutenant Young or Captain Young over here now. <laughs> he he doesn't have a beer he has a like a flask like an yeah. old dented flask um that it, lo- it looks like it like stopped uh uh a, a, t- um, a, pierce, a, a piercing <laughs> claw <laughs> at some point like dented in on one side and he's he's drinking something out of you can smell it from a few feet away you know it's yeah. pretty pretty powerful yeah um and he he just he looks straight ahead uh and he's like <clears throat> You need to stay the fuck away from Cortez. She don't need to learn anything from pieces of shit like you. And and as he turns to like meet your gaze, you can tell like he's had most of the flask. Yeah. Uh, and he w- he's acting like he normally wouldn't. He's sort of right on the edge of maybe acting out in a way that he normally wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, his eyes are like try to focus on you. And you could tell he's like, he's not having it. Um, and then <laughs> he says, "Yeah, because I was gonna, I, w- I want to instigate him." To if you, uh, yeah, well, he, yeah, what he, he say? He's, he's about, he's about to sort of walk away, mm-hmm. stagger away, but he says, "Had a perfectly good outfit here until you showed up." And he, he like includes the three of you. And as he's glancing around, maybe this is the booze talking. But he, he looks at Young with some kind of disdain, which he normally doesn't. Normally, he's, like, completely professional with Young. But he, like, is including all three of you, Pastor and Act. Like, you showed up and ruined their cool little group. And then they got kicked off their ship and put in this, you know. He doesn't say all that stuff. But um, it's obvious that he's got all these, like, deep-seated... Um, his animosity, just, just for the fact that you showed up at all. And he's mostly directing it at you, but he includes puts the rest of you in. So he's not mad at Cortez, though? No. No, no, no. He he doesn't say anything bad about her. Okay. Well, um... Yeah, well, I get mad when he does that, John. Uh, so so when, when Stone says, like, to all of you, he's like... And I say, hold up, Stone. Hold, hold your horses here. If you're gonna get... <laughs> being mad at me is fine. But when you take your shit out on, on, you know, on everyone else here... And I, you know, I, and I stand up straight. Yeah. He, he, he walks up and like get, gets in your face. Yeah. Um, and he, he would normally like maybe be a little cautious or something, but he's had it enough to not think about that. And yeah, you're a little taller. Um, and he's, he looks up at you. <laughs> he's like, I don't, take orders from you trooper and you see him you see the like the wheels turn in he's about to do something yeah i see oh yeah i i I go to him i'm like or what in front of everybody (laughs) like the whole party oh you want to like because it's been quiet up to now yeah i I want i want him to do something and he's going to regret in front of the whole group it's like undermining his authority all right uh, test an FA. Yeah. See, the thing is that I don't know what what failure would look like here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like failure is actually success. I don't know. Uh, let me try. Uh, so it's uh, less than four. Uh, so before. Oh, well, yeah. whatever. It's fine. All right. Yeah. Um. So he. He's keep his wits. No, you. So you you go to him. Um, yeah, you are, you're goading him to get violent, right? I think he, that, yes. that's the direction. That's the direction mm-hmm. he's going. Okay. Um, you, you do, uh, but instead of causing a big scene, like you wanted to, um, he's uh, like way faster than 
you expected, even being drunk. And he's he's like right in sucker punch range if you wanted to blast him. But instead, you're like, hey, come on, come on, come on. And then all of a sudden, he's kind of off to the side of you and has has t- sh- like underhook your arm and turned your back to the rest of the room as if the two of you were having a kind of confidential moment and he grabs your windpipe and just uh, it starts to you start to like tunnel out he's just like like killing you maybe he's just knocking I, you out you don't know all of a I sudden don't you, play can't that breathe. Game. <laughs> you can't breathe you can't move your arms and he's just like looking at you in the eye like doesn't say anything he's just like and blackness starts to take over i uh i'm gonna bang on the locker or something that i can so someone can see um uh, but if that doesn't get anyone's attention <laughs> to come over then i'm absolutely gonna like throw an elbow i'm like get out of this uh, um, right so like i put like a <laughs> i smash my hand on the locker right like a loud smash um that should probably get someone's attention to look over and morgan you know, you're gonna you're saying yeah. something uh, I'm going to I'm going to walk over to the sergeant and say Sarge and I'm going to put my arm very comradely around him and say So the fly boys have just opened up the jet fuel. We're going <laughs> to we're not going to get it if we don't go soon. So why don't you uh quit messing around with pass, with uh with Goodman here and go get some. Okay. Uh yeah, Goodman's going completely red and now starting to go pale. You slap the locker uh, and a couple of people kind of laugh. Um, they don't really pay attention. And you you can see from your angle, Pastor Nack, that he's, yeah. Edmund is going out and like slumping in in the sergeant's arms. And the sergeant like shifts in tighter to to get the lock on his arm better so he can't move. Well, let's uh, do it. You can test NFA to yeah. talk him out of what he's doing here, yeah. Nope. Oh man. So you 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 tempt him with the the uh, the booze, um, and he 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 looks like back over across Goodman's shoulder, like they're kind of chummy looking here, and he looks over and sees you talking, and his eyes are glazed over, and you see him just like everything is coming out now, and he he's, he's like, and he grips tighter for Goodman to just go out and so he can drop him and walk over to you. Uh, you can test FA if you want to, Eric, to like fight. Um, otherwise, he's going to render you unconscious and then take a swing at Pastor Nack. No, I think I don't think I'm going to actually fight him, John. I think Good. I think I'm going to go unconscious here. I'm going to let I'm going to let this scene and see what I want to see what Pastor Nack does when this happens. Yeah, he, right. he chokes me out. OK, so, yeah, you you see black and yeah. um hit the deck you'll you'll snap back in a f- sure a few seconds but uh you're out for the moment yeah, and and, and he just as the as the body's moving out of the way pastor Nag, like out of your field of view you see the sergeant behind it just like ah, just taking out his uh, frustration and the fist is coming at you do you want to fight him or do you want to uh it? yeah i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna fight him yeah. cool because i was uh is it cool if at this point we notice that something's up because i was trying to respect the scene where like you know totally the back is to us we're not 100 percent clear there's noise people drinking beers a lot as, of hooting and hollering but like at this point this should be pretty obvious right as the punch lands or is deflected or whatever it becomes obvious that fight has started all right cool uh test fa morgan with a five I will, this is a versus, so I will roll for the sergeant. I succeeded, but I only got a three, so. Okay. Um, but how do you want it to go? Do you want to, yeah, you, 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 you tell me. So he, he tries to clock me, and He's I. He's just going to uh, crack you in the face. I pretty much uh, brush it aside. I don't let it actually hit me. And I let him kind of stumble a bit. And then I pick him up and I'm like, whoa, maybe you shouldn't have some after all. Okay. Why don't you go rest? Are, are, you trying off, to physically, are you trying to physically restrain him now? Or are you trying to talk him down? It's more of a, it's a jokingly physically, it's a, a joking physical restraint. But no, it's, he's, you know, you made your point. Now go sleep it off. Okay. Uh, if he wants to push it, well, then things will happen, but. He, it feels like he wants to push it. 
what what what's your reaction, Strash? It sounds like you're. Uh, to do what something. was this guy's last name? I, I keep I keep wanting to call him Stone, but I forget. Yeah, Stone. Oh, it is. Yep. Uh, I think that there's just like my 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 voice like cuts right through the din, right? And and I'm standing there, and I say, Stone, are we going to have a problem? And then I just let it sit for a beat, and I say, uh, This is conduct unbecoming of an officer. He struggles, like he tries to rip free of, of Pasternak's grip and Pasternak's got him pretty good. He's going to have to really escalate, you know, to, to get out. Um, so he struggles for a second and his eyes are blurry and he sees you and he still has that like frustrated anger. Um, and the, the rest of the room, like they're pretty cool with you guys. Like you've won them over. He thought the sergeant was on your side too, but apparently not. Um, and they all look at him and, and uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Sergeant Fisher uh, from the second platoon. It, it like comes up and he, and he starts to like maybe do a move, you know, like do something to really hurt Pastor and try to get out. And Sergeant Fisher's like, hey, whoa, 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 we're all, we're all friends here. And he's like, no, we're fucking not. And he's like, Sarge, Sarge. And everyone stops. And it's very obvious that they're on Lieutenant Young's side. You, you come around Goodman on the floor. You yeah. I'm coughing like, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, totally. I, I think I'm, I'm going to push it. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, uh, there are plenty enough bugs for us to kill that we do not need to be fighting amongst ourselves. And it's my policy to deal with problems and then let them die. So out the fuck with it. What is going on, Stone? He, he again tries to shrug you off, Pastor Mac, to like, leave me alone. And so like, you can hang on to him if you want to, or you can let him kind of I'll let him go if he's rant. Something. Okay. Yeah, he's, he staggers back and he's like, I, my problem, I don't have a problem. You're the problem. And he's pointing at, at you and mostly Goodman kind of catching you in the same thing. Um, trash like that doesn't belong in the core. I mean, get off me. And he staggers again. Everyone can tell that he's had way too much to drink. Um, Fisher like tries to like, hey, you know, we're sergeants. We're the same, you know, he tries to step in and like lead him out of the room, um, which he will do unless you want to take it to another level here. Uh, no, but I might see if I could get this asshole reassigned. Yeah. So this is the thing now, Captain, uh, you have powers of rank. Um, I mean, Lieutenant, you already had some, but like you have a console or a tablet or something in your quarters here you can write people up you can put them up for demotion you can do disciplinary action you can reassign people uh anything like that is is in your purview now so um, so i think i think what's going to happen is before anything else happens i address the room right because like there's a scene and everyone wants to know sort of like how this is going to shake out um, and so yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to look at the room and I'm going to say, but before you do that, yeah. let me get, let me give you your current read. And in case you want to like uh, influence sure. the situation, your current read is they're on your side. They've liked you being the leader so far. Um, they really respect stone and maybe they're wondering, maybe there's like, you can see it on their faces where they're like, well, shit, is there stuff we don't know about that, that he knows about? Which Lieutenant Tyrrell would know as well. Like he he knows the like the real transcripts from your missions and stuff and the shit and the disciplinary action with Goodman and stuff like that. But no no one else really does. But you can see the wheels turning. Um so like the situation right now before you say anything is they respect you, but they really they do respect Sergeant Stone. And if he has a big problem with Goodman, it's probably for a good reason. And maybe Goodman is poison for the for the unit. Maybe it's better. Maybe he's maybe he's right, um, except for Cortez. Obviously, she's like she thinks Goodman's cool. But anyway, that's that that's your current read. Uh, I think that I don't address their specific fears. I think that I I address like sort of how I expect the chain of command to work. Right. 
Okay. And I'm like, uh, I, I think I, I look them all in the eye and I say like, uh, I say like, uh, uh, like I, I, I'm not going to be too, too, like as a person, I would probably start with, we're probably all feeling anxious, but that's not Young's style, right? Like as, as, as the captain, I probably just look out at all of them and I say, uh, uh, what I said to him goes for everyone. There's plenty enough bugs out there to deal with. And some of us may be fuck ups. Nobody joins the core because we had all our shit straight back on earth. Um, but if you have a problem outside of the mission, uh, you come to me and we deal with it and we deal with it once and then it's considered done. And if it continues being a problem, then I'll deal with it. Uh, and then I like pause for a beat and like sort of like scan the room. Then I go, and you know what else is a problem? Not enough beer. And I'll take in whatever they give them more booze command. <laughs> you o- you override the ration limitation. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> Nice. Morgan? Yeah, so you do that, and I think you walk. Do you walk away from the panel, or do you kind of stay there? Uh, I, I think I, I hover because I want everybody to be drinking beers. But again, Young is not a hundred percent in the middle of all of this, doing the same right. stuff. Right? Like well, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give uh, give Goodman a hand up, and I'm gonna walk over to the console and go. You know what? I think we all had enough fucking fun. Let's get some actual booze. <laughs> <laughs> nice hang on i just need to pull this cap and ooh, booze <laughs> tech tech sergeant tech corporal pasternak uses his technical wizardry <laughs> to substitute uh yeah why not, it's i mean it's nfa test right uh yep. you can you can get nice <laughs> so it's just one step above beer right you over you override it and you just get like um it's not engine degreaser. Uh, it, it's actually meant to be consumed by humans, but it's like the cheapest, worst, low grade crap. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that yeah, that's what it is. They have like um, unaged, uh, just just yeah. straight, um, okay. straight ethanol. Yeah, and <laughs> you're, you you get it out of the out of the machine. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. Um, but that, that certainly, uh, like diffuses the situation to some degree. Um, young, if you want to, if you want to move the needle on the like lingering doubts about Goodman, um, I don't think that speech addresses Goodman directly, but I think if you want to test NFA, you, you can potentially shut everyone up about it. (laughs) Uh, You know what? (laughs) Um, Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna. And the reason okay, yeah. I'm back on it is for two reasons. One of which is completely out of character, which is I think Eric has a cool subplot and I want to see where it goes. Um, and one of which is completely in character, which is that Goodman's been a thorn in my side since day one, but now he's a thorn in somebody else's side. And I'm <laughs> captain rank and this is not my job to fix, right? Like exactly. if Goodman comes to me and says, captain, I need help. That's a very different situation. But Goodman is getting into trouble with superior officers must be Tuesday. So, yeah, I mean, it's, if he stays in that, uh, platoon, it, he is Sergeant Stone's problem to discipline and deal with. So, um, yeah. So, so if I get a request for a transfer or if Stone comes and talks to me at a different time or any number of other situations will cause me to act, but as it stands, I don't, this is, this is, a sergeant or maybe even like one step above a sergeant. Maybe it's a lieutenant level problem. It's not a captain level problem, right? Yes. So the the current situation is there there's one lieutenant left, uh, which is Lieutenant Tyrrell, um, who has been perfectly happy with you being the default platoon leader. Um, which obviously now you you technically are the platoon commander as a captain. Um but that does mean that there is no lieutenant if unless Tyrrell steps up and does what he's supposed to do. So I think with that speech, at least you don't need to test NFA for this, but it's, it's a little bit of a message to Tyrrell. Like there's a chain of command, by the way, you're in it still lieutenant. <laughs> you need yeah. to actually start doing shit. Uh, so uh, I, it's, it's definitely sufficient for that message to get across. You don't need to test for that. Um, Can I- take some time and, and try and figure out what all my new authorities slash capabilities are and see if we can get shunted yeah. to a proper ship. <laughs> well, speaking of that, just before we go to break, uh, 
the we cut to the exterior view outside planet 847 um, with the Saratoga sort of boosting away, going back, moving out of the gravity well to prepare for a jump or whatever ships do after planetary assaults. Um, and there's a twinkling in the star field and whoosh, whoosh, the giant bulk of a capital ship uh, leaps into view, dwarfing the Saratoga with Columbia across the side of it. Um, and that's, that's where we will cut as the Columbia arrives. We'll see what happens when we come back. Awesome. Cool. All right. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for a quick little five minute bio break. I will see you guys on the other side. <laughs> 